everyone, Mr. Market here, and today I've got part 9 on how to make a Discord chatbot. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to send mass messages to everyone in your server or the channel, and also how to enable the bot to support multi argument commands so you're not just limited to the one uh, argument all the time. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do the uh, mass message first. Now, there's two ways to do it uh, you can either do it in command form. Um, which I don't really recommend unless you want to um, have admin permissions on it or whatever or you can actually do it in uh, your main form of a button and stuff so I'll go ahead and show you how to do that as well because it's a little bit more complicated um, and yeah that can stay a send message and inside here what we're going to do is if we go up a little bit and just find uh, the bit of code where we found a server before now I'll copy this line up to there where we found the channel and what I'll do is I'll bring it down here and just paste it there now what I'm going to do is because I've got a new uh, server I'm going to rename it to Merck Testing and the channel is general as well so that should be fine um, so what we'll do is we'll create uh, dim users just like that and it'll be an array and it'll be equal to that and dot users just like that so now what's here um, dim users as a user should be good yeah and now what we'll do is we'll have a for each statement we'll say for each uh, user as a user in users now what that's going to en enable us to do is I, if I put this to a lowercase u we can now do something for each user in that channel now what I'll do is I'll just say user dot send message and then obviously I'll just put in here YouTube or something like that but you can have like a um, a text box actually I'll go ahead and do that I'll copy a text box down uh, just line it up text box free so what we'll do is we'll just put here text box free dot text and remove that silly speech mark and there we are so if I launch this up if I head over to discord um, into the server you can see it's only me in here anyway but if I were to open this bot up type a little message in here testing and hit send and no apparently we have a problem uh, additional information unable to cast the object right so I guess let's just do it a different way instead of creating this array here we'll just take that away and then we'll copy this line and we'll stick this line where users was and let's see how that works out for us um, although it's kind of long uh, it should still work for us so let's give it a try so I'll say um, this is test hit send you can see I got a discord message I'll head over to the chat and you can see this is the test got sent to me and obviously that would get sent to everyone in the server or channel but it's just me in there so um, that's the only reason uh, I got it and I just want to let you know that we're going into a specific channel here what you can actually do is take away the whole channel thing and just use the users in the server it, so you can send it to everyone in the whole server if you really want to and that's that way and now if you wanted to do it in a command you'd copy this for statement <coughs> or for loop and then you'd go up and it would be a double command so you'd put in here let's say case uh, mass and <coughs> you'd put your for loop in just like that and because it's in here we need the add we need to add the awaiting and instead of sending uh, into the finding the server this way we're going to use message dot channel dot users just like that and then because obviously we'd want to send like the command what come over come after the command we'd take textbook free away and we'd have to create something here because we can't just use the argument which we have because that only supports one word so what we can actually do is create a new string and we'll call it the message as a string 
and it's going to be equal to the message that we get in the very first place and don't forget this message contains the trigger and command still so we need to go ahead and remove it so we can say dot remove and we need to give it a starting position which will be zero of course because if you remember this only gets triggered if it started with a, a trigger so we 100% know that it's always going to be there and then we need to specify how many numbers or places we need to take away from the message so we want to take the length of the trigger and we also want to add on to that the command dot length because don't forget each command will have a different length and also we want to add on a one at the end and the reason I'm adding on the one is because it's going to take care of the space which comes after that command um, so we're left with a pure bit of text and then we're going to send the message the message just there like that and that's how you'd uh, send a plain message like that and don't forget probably want to have this admin commands on this one and that's how you'd use it in uh, command form and this is not actually not the multi um, argument thing I was talking about so we'll get to that now and um, so what we'll do is we'll create another command here called um, testing this time uh, and what we'll do is we'll say dim I guess we can call it args and it needs to be an array as a string and it's going to be equal to message dot split and we're going to split out of space so it's kind of like what we're doing up here for the argument but you can see now it's an array we're still splitting out the space but for the argument we're only taking number one I guess you could use number two or whatever but arguments only set to number one um, so using this array now I guess you could put it along with the message as well they could go up here with these two but really we only want to use it here so we'll just do it in here um, so we'll split in there so now what we can do is access each different thing with the arguments but um, something that's to keep in mind is a simple if check and you can check if args dot length and you can check how like big the array is and it will be let's say you have four spaces that means you're probably gonna have five words um, so the uh, length of the args should be four because it starts at zero so uh, what you're gonna do is you can check if it is equal or more than more than less than a certain number depending on how many um, commands you want to allow in this case and um, so we don't really want to care about that just now I just want to show you the basics so what we'll do is we'll send back a message uh, message dot channel send message and I'm gonna send back args and what you want to do is for totally forget about args zero because arg we're splitting at the space so that's gonna still leave us with the command and the trigger so zero will be the command and the trigger so don't use that you want to start from number one and that will be your first argument and then what you can do is add on maybe let's say you want to add on something there so we know where they separate just like that and then you can add on args number two and obviously you can use as many as you want but don't forget if you hard code these in and then args two doesn't exist you will get an error so you might want to check just like I said if if there is that many parts in the array before you do hard code in all of them um, so hopefully you understand that what I mean is let's say you code for three arguments but the user only inputs two uh, your program will throw an error because there is not three so that's why you should use the if check that I just showed you before you hard code it so hopefully that makes sense so what we'll do is I'll just launch it up and I'll just show you um, that it works so I'll do testing and then I'll have number one and then I'll have number two and it should just send back you can see it sent back one and then two but let's say I did testing did one two and three I didn't account for the third one so nothing will even happen there shouldn't be an error it will just send us out like that but now if I were to say testing and just do one remember I've got code there to account for the second one but now it doesn't exist so we should get an error and you can see we're straight into the error 
because ARX2 doesn't even exist. So that's why it's important to put that check in, like I showed you. Um, so that's it. One quick thing that I sh want to show you, actually, real quick, is a nice little feature to do with all the different uh, formatting, which is an available in Discord. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. Uh, but basically, it's all different formatting you can use. And the one I want to show you to make responses look nice um, is uh, three little, I'm not actually sure what they're called, uh, but three of these little things here. And you can put them into your commands. Um, let's say I'll just stick it on the invalid one. You'll put three of them like that, leave a space, come over here and put another three where you want it to close. Um, but you'll have to go ahead and do this on everywhere you're sending a message. Um, let's say you want it on a command, you'd have to like add the string and add it on. Uh, so I'll go ahead and trigger an invalid command. And you can see it, it sent back invalid command, but now you can see it's in this nice looking uh, little box. Just like that. So that's the one thing you can keep in mind when creating it because it will help your bot look a little bit better. Um, yeah, so that's that's everything for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you next time.